Oh, I can't, I can't bear this to you. Oh, you're supposed to put your knees out. I don't know. Hidden talents. Uh, I don't know. I sing in the shower, you know. Everyone sounds good in the shower. Um, Nah, nah, I don't really think I have any. Bars and that. Uh, oh, do you know what? I used to rap when I was younger. I actually did used to rap. Um, I freestyle from time to time, just messing around with the guys. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, put that down as a talent, yeah. Rapping. All right. <laughs> uh... Oh, the worst fashion sense. Boy. I'm going to have to give that to Parker. Oh, wait. Yeah. He's from LA, it's a little bit different over there. Right. You know, it hasn't, we haven't caught up apparently, but there's certain fits that I couldn't see myself in. So, yeah, Parker Jackson Cartwright, <laughs> our point guard, definitely. Okay. Oh, a lot of people saying it's me, yeah. They're, like I said before, they're telling lies. I think it's either Chilo or Parker. Yeah, they're the funny guys on the team, for sure. <laughs> The Italian media, for instance, have greatly contributed to the popularity of the game. The media have a tremendous influence. This could not have been truer in the case of football wildcard Mario Balotelli. In 2012, Balotelli became the first back player to represent Italy during a major tournament. His debut was met with chants of, there are no black Italians from the Italian ultras. With this monumental point in the history of Italian football, a huge weight was put on the press to rightfully lambast the Tifosi for their racist abuse. Instead, La Gazzetta dello Sport published a cartoon depicting the striker as King Kong. Yeah, he's at like 31 so many, now, isn't he, I think. The, the, Just this, sat on the bench for a year. How many players were fantastic players and now we're trying the way in the Pundits game to literally just grasp onto any, any shape of football in any shape or form. Gareth, you don't want to be them. You don't want to be Michael Owen, Gareth. Oh, God. You play as much football as you can towards the end of your career because you're going to miss it. You can play golf when you're 50. You can play golf whenever, right? You're going to miss football. And you're going to, you're going to look back at this period and think, wow, what was I doing? And I don't defend Zidane. I think Zidane's a d as well. If he went to the Premier League, no, it'd still be one of the highest played players in the league. In, on a small scale level, yeah, you're right. It's to stop teams going bust, right? Because there's like Leeds did that, you know, to try and win the Champions League. They, they threw everything at it. So that was, you know, one of the main initiatives. But really, what, what the situation is, they want to keep it fair. That's why it's financial fair play. They want, they want it so you can't buy your way to success. But the problem with that is the whole way it's built up is unless you have a high revenue stream, you cannot compete and you'll be punished for that. And there's only a handful of teams that have the high revenue streams to keep them big. It's very easy to say, oh, um, it's to stop clubs overspending their means. But it's like, there is absolutely nobody who has achieved anything in football in, these, in the past, what, 30 years without spending money. And you're probably going to say less than now, aren't you, winning the league? No, because I think we, you know, the background, don't we, that we, they spent, they did spend a lot to get into the Premier exactly. League. So, yeah, Leicester... Uh, brought financial fair play in the championship to get to the Premier League. That was only like, was it two seasons before they ended up winning the Premier League? So, you know, it ha it happens everywhere. So Leicester, the, the ultimate fairy tale, if you, look, if you looked at it from that perspective, they brought financial fair play, they went on mm. to win the Premier League. Is it still a fairy tale?
Ryan wieder ich wusste. Mein Dad jumpt auf Wand. Und ich glaube, es geht Yeah, good memories. Really, really good memories. Um, you know, I, I don't think anyone really believed that we were going to go into that game and win. Um, every single person in our team uh, knew that we were capable of doing it, and you know, we worked so hard that that, that you know that whole run, uh, we were never going to let that one go. And yeah, just just a really proud, happy moment. Do you know what? I I watch it all the time. <laughs> I've got the uh, I've got the whole game and. It was, yeah, it was surreal, surreal. I can't even explain it. It was, it was unreal, and you know, all of our family were there, and it was the first trophy the club had won in over ten years, and yeah, special day, one of the best days of my life. So, have you got any talents outside of uh, basketball? Talents, musical talents, I say. <laughs> I can play the piano, um, a bit of the guitar. It's funny you say that. So, uh, we've got a picture here. Would you like to just? Talk us through this one. <laughs> um, this picture was actually a joke. Oh yeah. I believe, yeah. At university, um, we were actually taking the mic out somewhere, but I can actually play a bit of the, of the guitar. You started coaching, didn't you? Your first coaching role. Would you like to uh, just talk us through this picture? Yeah. So this was the academy that I am. Um, was in charge of at Hereford Sixth Form College um, straight after I graduated. Um, I got offered the job there to take over the academy. Um, yeah, the, there wasn't that many players at first, um, but we, we grew it and grew it, and I'm really proud of what we did there. It was a special place to work. How important would you say that is? How would you look back on these memories now? I wouldn't be where I am without the two years that I had at Hereford. Um, it taught me a lot. I worked with amazing people um, and that amazing boss who backed me in everything I wanted to do. Staff around me were amazing. Um, yeah, it, it was a big, big part in kind of my career um, that got me going and I think it's, it's definitely one of the main reasons why I got the job here at Cheshire.